Hey guys, Brian with Vet Source checking in today on a nice sunny dog days of mid June here in Southeast Texas. Uh, coming at you today, gonna do a brief little description of the tune port injection system uh, that I'm gonna begin working on on our long term yellow gold Formula 350 car that we've had for a while now. If you look back above my head, you'll see some of the videos or uh, the first video I did when I first acquired this car. But today what I'm going to do is kind of give you an overall brief description of what we're going to do uh, on this. Now, this car here has what's called or known as a tune port injection system in it. Now, for those of you that aren't old enough or, you know, don't remember this system when it came out or weren't really into cars back then, uh, this was the first fuel injection system uh, electronic of the mid 80s that came out of GM. But before then, Basically what we had were the kind of lousy throttle body injection, kind of a carburetor hybrid, essentially two fuel injectors and a carburetor body with electrical connections, and that was our idea of fuel injection. The tune port injection was the first attempt at General Motors to run a really uh, one injector per cylinder injection system, and of course the only cars that received this were the Corvette, the 85 Corvette, and the 85 IROC Zs and the Trans Ams had them, uh, Camaro IROC Zs. And uh, I think they may have had the 350 version available in the Camaro and Trans Am, but I think all they had was the 305. I can't remember for sure. Corvette was the only one they had the 350, I believe. So by uh, later 80s, they had adapted the 350 cars, or 350 tune port injection to the F body cars, and that's what's on this 88 Formula 350 here. So. If you look at it real carefully, you know, everything's still installed. This is an earlier system, so it's got the mass airflow system, uh, which is this right here that monitors or is an air meter basically uh, that follows into a throttle body here, uh, right here on this part. I'm sorry, the, uh, the throttle body into the main plenum chamber and then down into your runners, which run into your cylinders here. And you can barely kind of see here, this is the fuel rail assembly here with injectors and things like that. Now, what we're gonna be doing on this car is, um, like I said, you've seen some of the work I've done on this. I've got a playlist there above my head if you haven't seen that. Um, this car suffers from just some injectors that are getting older. Um, it's got a couple of spark plug wires that are bad. And then some chucklehead put, when they put the distributor cap back on it last time, they tighten the screws down too much. So what we've got is some stripped screws on the distributor cap, which is not allowing us to have it uh, tighten down properly so it wants to pop off whenever it wants to. So I'm going to show over the next series a couple videos me taking this entire system apart. As you can tell looking at it, it's kind of complex. This is not what I consider a, a casual first time job person to do. Um, so this is going to be something I detail over the course of a few videos, taking the throttle body out, the center plenum, the runners, I'm going to go ahead and take the lower intake off, the distributor out, valve covers, everything. I'm basically going to do a top end job on the motor. Now, what um, you got to watch out for is all the little wires and vacuum lines and things like this uh, that are associated. In fact, as I'm looking at this, I notice I got a pinched off or broken line there that I need to fix because that's not going to be any good. So, um, but you know, this being their first attempt, this is a rather complex system for something back then that had the processing speed of basically a Commodore 64 computer. I kid you not, it's pretty simple. Um, but the complexity of the mechanical side of it is rather interesting and I think a lot of times it deters people from wanting to mess with them nowadays because they look at this and go, I'm not going to deal with that because, you know, the truth is LS motors and the newer stuff, uh, they kind of traded um, function over form because those motors are super easy to play with and create power with um, and have a lot of horsepower, but they just don't look that inspiring when you pop open the hood and just see a blah looking LS motor. This is actually one of the better looking intake systems uh, on a motor, and if you get it polished and cleaned up, it looks really, really, really nice. So um, it's one of those things that I think that it's not gonna produce the most power for you and it's kind of limited based on its top end power uh, at the upper end of the RPM, RPM ranges. But what I'll do is in a second here, I'm gonna walk over and show you a system I have pulled off of a motor so you can kind of see what we're working with. I'm gonna kind of give you a 
basic overview of how I'm gonna pull this apart. So give me a second, I'll walk over here and I'll show you guys what I'm working on. Okay, so I'm back here. Now this is a tune port injection system that I have pulled off of another car uh, that's complete um, with the lower intake and everything. So I'm basically gonna kind of give you a run through and show you how this system works or how it's kind of assembled. So as you can see what we're looking at here, this would be your lower intake manifold, fuel injectors here on the sides, fuel rail, these are your runners, center plenum, and then throttle body right here. Now if you're looking at it from this perspective, you can see here this is where your throttle cable attaches, and what it does is, if I can get it to open, when it opens, throttle, throttle blades open up, and there's where your air charge comes through. Now the unique thing about this system was the air charge would come through this center plenum down through these cylinders and then you can kind of see here it would go over to the other side so these ports here were actually feeding the odd i'm sorry the even number cylinders two four six and eight and over here this was feeding one three five and seven okay so what you've got is a really long air charge coming through here. That's why these runners are kind of small. Um, because from this point all the way down through the intake system to the other side, you've got 24 inches, two feet of air charge. So sometimes what guys will do is they'll make a mistake when they're putting high performance heads on them and they'll put heads with too big of combustion chambers. And what that does, it diffuses the air charge and then they don't get any power out of it and they wonder why. So this system here is really stout on lower end, uh, under 4,000 RPMs. This thing will sco scoot off the line pretty quick. It'll leave a lot of cars behind. Um, and then once it gets above 5,000, it starts to lose steam because it's just got too long to travel the air charge. But back here you can see in the corner, this is our fuel pressure regulator right here, uh, vacuum, um, uh, I'm sorry, with a vacuum port, that's what actually makes it work. You can get adjustable fuel pressure regulators for these. Fuel rail right here, Schrader valve is here, so that you can check fuel pressure. Whenever you're told to check fuel pressure, that's where you wanna go is that Schrader valve right there. So you can hook up a fuel pressure line to it. Um, you can see kind of underneath there, there's the EGR valve inside of there. Not really too well. Um, throttle position sensor is here. Idle air control motor is here. Fuel lines come through. Sorry for moving around too much. Fuel lines are here and they feed in through the front right there. So um, what's gonna happen when I start to tear this thing apart is removing individual bolts. Now, if you look at this, this thing has one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you may be able to see here, see if I can turn this over so you can see on the back side. See that hidden bolt right there? 10 bolts per side. Um, see over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, it's another hidden bolt on this side as well. So getting this apart takes a little bit of effort. There's your hidden bolt right there. So getting this apart is a bit of a struggle. One of these loose here, I'll show you. These are not very long. And what you need to make sure of is that this is a T40, okay? And you see how this one's kind of worn out a bit? It's been off of there several times. So what happens is when you try to get these out of here, then they become stripped and they're worthless. So that one we obviously won't use reuse anymore. So um, what we'll end up doing tomorrow, when I provide another update or the next day, whenever I can get to it, so we'll pull this off, we'll pull the center, plant them off, then we'll start with the runners and move on to our lower intake and distributor. So just wanted to give you guys a quick work through of it real quick so you can see what I'm gonna be doing and kind of explain while I'm breaking it up into a few videos because I don't wanna overwhelm everybody at first. So uh, be sure to check back in. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more hit the notification button or bell I guess you'd call it and that way you can see how I'm doing this and get this top end done on this let's see even this one here you can see what they did at one point they took this one apart and see these non-standard fasteners in here 
it's not a big deal, but it just drives me nuts. I hate non-standard fasteners, especially on this system, because it's such a good-looking system. So uh, thanks for checking in, and I'll be back with another update pretty soon. Hope to see you guys in then. Thanks.